Hi everyone, it's Dr. Lara Rockatenitz from the University of Akron Field Station coming to you remotely today to talk about the secret lives of the American woodcock. Tonight was supposed to be our woodcock walk at Bath Nature Preserve and unfortunately it had to be canceled. So I hope that this little introduction will give you some uh, motivation to get out there on your own and try to find these curious creatures. I love American woodcock because they are, to me, one of the earliest harbingers of spring. They let us know that spring has finally sprung when they arrive back in our area. Um, I'm sure that you all have your own ideas of how you know that spring has arrived and whether that be the call of the red winged blackbirds or tulips and daffodils in your yard. They give us a um, renewed sense of hope that, that um, the seasons are changing and our long Cleveland and Akron winter is finally over. So before we get started, I want you to know that there's a woodcock hidden in this picture, and I wonder if that you can spot it before I point it out to you. Okay, I think I've given you enough time, so if you haven't seen it by now, here's this little guy just hidden away in the leaf litter there. Uh, amazing adaptations um, are part of the deal with this little critter. Um, and that help um, them survive. And, and I can't wait to share some of those things with you today. Last year, we had a full house for the American Woodcock Walk and it was so great to be surrounded by people that are excited and interested to learn new things about some of our native Ohio wildlife. I wish it could be this way tonight, but unfortunately um, we're gonna have to make do. So let's get started. The Ruffed Grouse Society has this really cool interactive migration map that you can check out. It shows kind of how woodcock are moving up through from their uh, southern overwintering areas into the north. And the update for today is that they're still continuing to move north. However, the snowpack through much of southern Canada is slowing northward progress. The first marked woodcock of the year arrived in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick um, and for the first time this year in Manitoba. Uh, the Rough Grouse Society has also received reports of nesting woodcock in Rhode Island and New York with reports of females with broods in Virginia and Alabama. So spring is definitely on its way. I want to point out that on their northward migration, these birds are particularly vulnerable to flying into buildings that are lit up at night in cities and they often meet their demise. So we have some great programs called Lights Out Cleveland and Lights Out Akron in our areas that are helping to try to change the culture of leaving lights on in cities to help protect birds that are migrating um, over the Great Lakes. This Woodcock Activity Viewer, if you Google search it, is really cool because it shows kind of like a heat map of where um, the woodcock are located, but it also allows you to contribute to their data. So yesterday I went ahead and put in that we were seeing um, American Woodcock at Bath Nature Preserve, and hopefully that data will be integrated into the map soon. So here's our little star of the show, the American Woodcock. Its Latin name is Scolopax minor, and that genus puts it in with um, sandpiper family, actually, which is why it's often considered a shorebird, uh, even though it occurs in mostly upland areas. So it has a ton of cool nicknames, and I love this part about this bird. So some of those nicknames are Mud Snipe, Bog Sucker, Timber Doodle, that's my personal favorite, Labrador Twister, Big Eye, and Night Partridge. They're not very big, they're kind of a small bird. I often like to describe them as about the size of a Nerf football, and they don't weigh very much. So I pulled out a can of tomato paste from my pantry today, and it weighs um, six ounces, and that's about how much these birds weigh. You can see from this picture that their plumage is just beautiful, all these different colors of browns and blacks, uh, and it allows them to be cryptic and camouflage into their um, habitat, which is mostly on the ground. They have really big eyes located on the top of their head, and that's indicative of the fact that these guys are on the lookout for predators. And in fact, they have really amazing um, uh, visual field um, of view. So they can see 360 degrees in the horizontal plane and 180 degrees in the vertical plane. That's crazy cool. Uh, so I, that's one of their amazing adaptations, I think. 
Uh, it should be noted that this is also a popular game bird. So about 500,000 of these birds are harvested every year by hunters. These guys really depend on young forest. So when we think about forest succession, we often are thinking that, you know, big mature forests are kind of the goal of what we want for restoration. But these guys are really dependent on this um, young kind of forest right here with this mix, mix, mix of scrubby, shrub, and grasslands on both sides. This allows them to um, be able to hide and protect their nests from predators uh, in the young forest, but then also for the males to have their um, mating displays in the open grasslands. So this is kind of what that young forest habitat would look like. And we have tons of this uh, habitat at Bath Nature Preserve. So um, one of the, the most exciting things about the woodcock are the males mating displays. And they often perform these before dawn and after dusk. It's important to remember that Bath Nature Preserve unfortunately is closed um, uh, after dusk and before dawn. So you'll have to find another site on um, one of our park districts that might be open a little bit uh, longer in the day. So we have tons of great natural resources in our area and so hopefully it won't be too hard to find um, a habitat that kind of looks like this young forest to habitat on one side and grasslands on the other side. Don't forget to practice your social distancing uh, while you're out in our wonderful parks and preserves. One of the reasons that that young forest habitat is really important is because the female woodcock nest on the ground. So you can see her here kind of hidden away in the leaf litter um, with some pine needles just sitting on her nest. And here are the eggs kind of in a shallow depression uh, filled with soft grasses. And then the babies when they hatch out are precocial. So those babies are fully feathered and can stand and walk on their own when they get out. But as you can imagine, all three of these stages make these birds really vulnerable to predators. Um, and so please keep your dogs on leashes at all times in order to help protect them. Here is one of my very most favorite um, adaptations of this bird. Their bills are prehensile, which means that they have a combination of muscle and bone that allows them to move the tip of their bill independently of the rest of their bill so that they can grasp earthworms, which is one of their very most favorite snacks. So these guys migrate because they can't access um, invertebrates and earthworms in the soil until we are frost free. So very cool bills um, and some of the other things that they would eat are invertebrates, snails, millipedes, spiders, flies, beetles, and ants. And they do this really cool little dance, which we'll talk about later in the presentation, where they rock back and forth on the ground. That um, allows them maybe to help hear the earthworms moving underneath the ground. And some research has shown that they can even sense the presence of earthworms in the soil with this really amazing uh, bill that gives them such a cool advantage for, for foraging in the soil. Okay, here's the part you've all been waiting for. How the heck are we gonna find these elusive camouflage cryptic critters in their natural environments? Well, you wanna be on the listen for their one note paint call. It kind of has a buzzy nasal quality. And you, once you hear that, um, you're going to then stop and pay attention because the males will flutter really high into the air and circle repeatedly. And the air will rush over their primary feathers, creating kind of a winnowing whistle. I think it even sounds like an insect or something mechanical. And then they'll descend aerobatically back to the very same spot that they took off from and repeat the process in hopes of attracting a female. We're going to go ahead and watch this amazing video by Bath Park board member John Landis um, capturing the paint of the woodcock and then once we hear that the next slide will be another video that he took of their sky dance when they're flying in those circles upward. I mean how cute is that? Okay, in this slide, make sure you're listening for that um, kind of insect uh, twittering sound coming from the woodcock's 
wings as they rise higher and higher into the air. You'll also hear the spring peepers in the background, another sure sign that spring has arrived. This is a cool graphic from SibleyGuides.com that kind of shows the acoustics associated with the woodcock mating ritual. Please don't forget to keep your dogs on a leash. Remember, because these guys nest on the ground, they're super vulnerable to predators. This illustration was done by Alexander Landis, son of John Landis, our amazing videographer from the past couple of slides. Thanks, John and Alexander, for adding to our presentation. The University of Akron Field Station is proud to have so many wonderful partners in helping us do our outreach. So a special thanks goes out to the American Woodcock Society, Bath Parks, Ohio Ornithological Society, Greater Akron Audubon Society, and Bath Community Fund. These folks have lent their time, expertise, and funding to help support the University of Akron Field Station in their year of the bird and all of our bird programming that we hope to bring to you this year. Okay, here's your chance to test your knowledge. What are some of the nicknames of the American woodcock? What type of habitat is really important to American woodcock? And what is something interesting about their feeding habits? I hope that this little presentation has given you the ability to answer some of these questions. In this crazy time, remember to take care of each other, our wild spaces and our native wildlife. Get out into nature, but don't forget to wash and sanitize your hands often and stay six feet away from others. That's the wingspan of a great blue heron. From the University of Akron Field Station family to yours, be well and keep rising, just like our plucky little timber doodle. In my world, it's totally appropriate to uh, end a science lecture with a dance party. So I hope that you will do the doodle and get out there, uh, keep exploring, stay curious.